probably just carbon. Um, our carbon surface typically has some sort of oxidation on it. And so you can oxidize it by letting it sit in air. We all know that we electrochemically oxidize it by applying high potentials. You can do this process with a laser. You could do it with, you know, from the nanotubes, we do it with acid. I mean, you name it and you can probably change the surface chemistry. It's one of the things that makes it carbon and other electrochemistry, quite frankly, quite difficult. When I put up that list of variables, it's like we'd all love to work with pristine electrodes, but they usually are not pristine. So what are the kinds of uh, groups that we can get off of carbon then? We get all sorts of surface groups. Um, uh, you, know, you can get an alcohol. Um, you can get you know, just the carbonyl. You can get carboxylic acids. You can even get like quinones and stuff like that. We'll talk about um, you know, quinone species um, being on the surface, um, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, these things can combine together and you can get complicated, funky stuff um, on the surface. Um, there's been a couple of papers the last five years or so, Cardi's group, Whiteman, to try and characterize some of these things and where they show up in the background current and stuff like that. Um, that are really useful for the field. They're not our shadow papers that like everybody would want to read, but uh, they're actually pretty useful to the field. Um, uh, talking about surface chemistry and what kind of groups are there. Okay, so um, uh, you know if we're going to do that, um, uh, we have to think about most of the time we think of these as being strongly attached, right? Like they're covalently bonded. There are times when people will do surface modified electrodes. So surface modified electrodes against anything where you put coating or something on it. I guess we do that with chlorinium tubes, right, in our lab, other things, right? And so you have to worry if you surface modify it, whether or not it is um, covalent, if it's going to stay attached, that kind of thing. Uh, but with our electrodes, we don't have to worry about it. Okay, um, so. One of the things we haven't yet done now, um, I'm realizing I don't think I did it for the thing by yourself either, is jar ourselves in a full tamogram. How can we not have done that? Um, so it turns out the voltanogram looks um, different for a thin layer cell or absorption. I didn't go to a thin layer cell because I said, oh, I'll just do it for absorption. That's what the whole voltammogram looks like. So again, this should look a little strange to you. So there's a few things going on, right? Number one, the peaks are not offset. If I agree well, they would be at the same peak. Uh, so there's no delta E peak. Um, and then, you notice how it doesn't stay up like before. Remember, we went through that trick question of once we turned back around, was it oxidizing or reducing? Well, in this case, we didn't turn back around. But right, remember, there's a, there's a given amount that's on the surface. And once it's gone, it's gone, right? Or a given amount in the thin layer cell, so it doesn't matter. So once you've oxidized it all, you've oxidized it all, it's all gone. Go on to the next time, you know, that kind of thing. And so um, it goes back down to zero. Right, and so if we continue to scan out up there, right, and we would get zero current. There's nothing to oxidize. We oxidized it all. Uh, that's what that's saying. So if you do a complete electrolysis, it goes back down to zero. And they have a huge explanation in the book about the delta peak being zero, but it just is. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it here, but it's not offset. Uh, the offset um, happens to do with diffusion, so it's not offset. And so it looks like a thin layer. Um, looks like a thin layer cell, and the peaks look weird. So this is one of the ways you can tell if you have some diffusion or some thin layer um, things. And you start doing the uh, concentration experiment in this lab, and you get up to high concentrations, like 50, 100 micromolar. Your CVs, our CVs tend to look, right, like this. We're going to talk about our CVs in a minute, right? But if you started to get up to higher concentrations, you'll notice they start to, well, that was really terrible. Um, you know, start to look more duct shaped. They start to look less like they come back down to the baseline. 
Um, it's because you're starting to get into a part where part of the current is diffusion control. Um, so you'll, you can actually see it. You had the best paper, I think, earlier. It's all in there. All right, we're going to take a very short break, um, and then I'll have one page notes left, but I want to.